Hi everyone, and welcome back to the world of EditorX. I'm Ido, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about heights in EditorX, specifically the three height properties that you can find in the inspector panel. If you enjoy the content on this channel, don't forget to give a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. First, let's take a look in the inspector and see the height properties that we have here. We have height, min height, and max height. So first let's understand the height property. The default setting here will always be auto, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute. So basically, if I put a value here, this will be the absolute height of the element, and it can be fixed or fluid, but the only thing affecting this element's height would be this property. So let's say that I have a container and its height property is set at 300 pixels. That means that no matter what viewport width we are in, or if the width of the container is fluid like in this example where it's set at 35%, or even if we change the height of our section, the height of the container is going to remain at the value that is set in the height property. Sometimes this can lead to some undesired issues. In this container, I have a paragraph that's currently set to not display. Let's go to the layers panel and click the eye icon in order to display it. If we inspect this paragraph element, we can see that it's aligned to the center and middle of the container and its width is set to 70%. Another thing to note here is that the font size is fixed at 18 pixels. We're currently at a viewport width of 1680 and everything looks fine. Now let's reduce our viewport width. The container width is reducing because it's set to a fluid value in relation to the section. As a result of that, the text box inside is also reducing in width because it too has a fluid width in relation to the container. This reduction in width causes the lines of text to break into more lines, thus making this text box taller until it reaches a height that is taller than our container, which is set to a fixed height, where finally it exceeds the boundaries of the container. So how can we solve this issue? This is where the height auto setting comes in. Let's go back to 1680 and set the container's height to auto. What we can see here is that now the height of the container is determined by the height of the content inside it. And if we now reduce our viewport width, as our text box get taller, it will push the container to be taller as well. Of course, we'll want to have some space between the text and the container. No problem, we can achieve that by adding top and bottom margins to the text element, or by adding padding to the container itself. So by having the height set to auto, you're allowing the element's height to be determined by the content inside of it, and that makes it more responsive. So now let's talk about the minimum height property. Every time you add a new section or container to your canvas, by default, its height is set to auto, and the minimum height is set to a value in pixels. What's behind that logic? So we understand why having the height set to auto is a good practice, because it helps our design be more responsive by letting the content determine the height. But what do we need the minimum height for? Let's just try setting it to none. Fail. Our container totally collapsed, and that actually makes sense because it's empty right now. There is no content to determine its height, so it collapses to zero height, and that's why we need the minimum height as a default. Once you have content inside the element, you can choose to remove the minimum height, and then, like I showed you before, the only thing determining the height is the content, and you can use margins or padding for the spacing. Another option is to leave in the minimum height, but then you have to take into consideration that it will not go under the minimum that you set. So when should we leave it in and when shouldn't we? Let's see an example. This section has a minimum height of 750 pixels. Inside it, I have elements that are scaling proportionally. The image is set to scale proportionally, the texts have a scale text, and the docking of the elements is in percentage. As I reduce my viewport width, I see that the elements inside the section are scaling, but I'm starting to get this large gap here. That's because the section has a minimum height. So in this case, I would remove it and let the content determine the height with no minimum. I'll just add some bottom padding to the section. Now let's see another example where this time minimum height will be useful to us. 
Here I have a section with a minimum height of 700 pixels. In it, I have an image that is stretched to the section and a stack of a title and a paragraph with no scale text. The stack's width is set to 40% and it has 40 pixel margins on the top and bottom. The reason I'm using a minimum height on the section is that as my viewport width reduces, I want my section height to remain the same, but only until the point where the stack gets too tall and then it will push the height of the section above that minimum of 700 pixels. Finally, let's take a look at the maximum height property. Now, this one is not as commonly used, and if you have some interesting use cases for max height, please let me know in the comments section. Nevertheless, it does come in handy sometimes, especially if you're dealing with dynamic content. Let's see an example. This is a dynamic page where the content is fetched from a collection in the content manager. In here, I have a container with its height set to auto. So the text element inside is determining its height. And as a result of that, the grid row's height is also affected. In this project item, it looks okay because the text is short, but when I switch to project item two, the text we get from the content manager is much longer. And as a result, this whole grid row gets taller. This might be fine for some cases, but here I want to limit the height that it can reach. So I'm going to give the container a maximum height of 500 pixels. Now we can see that the text is overflowing out of the container. So I'm going to give the container an overflow setting of scroll. That way, if it reaches that height, we'll be able to scroll the text inside it. When we set overflow to scroll, it gives the element a height in pixels. I'll set that back to auto. If we go back to project one, we'll see that there is no scroll here because there's not enough text for the container to reach overflow. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, you can support this channel by liking and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next video.